Hello and welcome to Wednesday Worship. I'm Paul Langford, a local preacher in the Falmouth and Gwanup Methodist Circuit, and my wife Gillian will be reading the scriptures for us shortly. In this series of Exploring Miracles, we come today to consider this unusual, possibly unfamiliar, and often overlooked miracle of the coin in the fish's mouth. Miracles can be listed in three categories, healing, bringing the dead back to life, and command over the forces of nature, into which category this miracle falls. It's interesting that it's only in Matthew's Gospel, and the commentators wonder whether that's because he had been a tax collector before Jesus called him to be his disciple. So let's hear the, the miracle from Scripture. Matthew chapter 17, reading verses 24 to 27, and it's entitled The Temple Tax. After Jesus and his disciples arrived in Capernaum, the collectors of the two drachma tax came to Peter and asked, Doesn't your teacher pay the temple tax? Yes, he does, he replied. When Peter came into the house, Jesus was the first to speak. What do you think, Simon, he asked. From whom do the kings of the earth collect duty and taxes? From their own sons or from others? From others, Peter answered. Then the sons are exempt, Jesus said to him. But so that we may not offend them, go to the lake and throw out your line. Take the first fish you catch, open its mouth, and you will find a four drachma coin. Take it and give it to them for my tax and yours. The temple tax was valued at two drachma. It was a tax paid to maintain the temple building at the time of census and paid by Jewish males, regardless of their social standing, who were aged between 20 and 50. You can read it later in Exodus chapter 30, verses 11 to 16. The temple tax of two drachma was valued at half a shekel, and that is exactly what two drachma represents, and two drachma represents two days' wages. Questions that were asked of Jesus were often intended to trap him in some way. And those who didn't believe who he was would have expected him to pay the tax. Peter was, of course, asked the question, doesn't your teacher pay the temple tax? And Peter, in his usual forthright manner, says, yes, of course he does, without really knowing the answer. And this time, he got it wrong. Jesus later on acknowledged in conversation with Simon Peter in private that the temple tax was an obligation to God and that he as God's son was exempt. Peter's wrong answer then created an awkward position for Jesus and the disciples. It's one of those times when Peter would have been better to have said he didn't know the answer. After all, why had Peter been asked? 
Just pause for a moment and ask ourselves, how often have we responded to a question or a situation rather than appear ignorant or out of touch? And by so doing, have been an embarrassment to ourselves and possibly others. Can we think of a time when we should have stayed silent or referred the questioner to another person? As I have looked at this miracle, I see Jesus' humility coming through in his willingness to pay the tax so as not to offend the unbelievers. And yet I believe there was another reason. He didn't want Peter to look small by embarrassing him because of his answer. There is evidence here of our gracious Saviour. So comes the miracle. Peter, the ex-fisherman, is given a task. And isn't it interesting that although Jesus had called him away from fishing, he still had a line. And Jesus told him to go and catch a fish. The reward was a four drachma coin in the mouth of the fish with which he paid the tax for Jesus and himself. So what lessons do we find in this miracle? We are called to cooperate with God in his work and in our witness to others. In this miracle, the fish was the intermediary. It held the coin. I would imagine that that fish had to die in order for Peter to be able to retrieve the coin from its mouth. To me, it illustrates Jesus' death on the cross as our intermediary, paying our debt, forgiving our waywardness, and opening through his resurrection our opportunity to know the assurance of eternal life as we welcome our Saviour on board. David shared his story with the Bible Society David's Christian father had died when he was just seven years old. His mother claimed to be a believer, but she had a very fierce temper that caused young David to lose the little faith he had until he was aged 25. Around that time, he had been researching philosophies. And then that horrific incident in New York happened that we have come to call 9-11. That caused David to consider the brevity of life, to think about death, and the future. The verse that came to him very powerfully was Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. 
Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. The other philosophies that he had studied were vain and empty. And once again he put his trust in Jesus. His life was transformed. In this miracle, the fish didn't die for nothing. And neither did Jesus, as long as those for whom he died, accept the benefit he brings. That new life that can be ours for eternity. How is your relationship with Jesus? And how is mine? So let us pray. Lord Jesus, we confess those times when we have spoken out of turn and those when we've remained silent but should have spoken of your love. As we have seen evidence of our gracious Saviour in this miracle, come in forgiving and renewing power into our lives and enable us to shine for you in the days that are ahead. We offer our prayer and with it ourselves in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord and Saviour. Amen.